Hello everyone, Spring applications have been created in the last several videos, but now let's examine how to create a Docker image for your application. After that, you can use any container platform to run your application. Let's get going. As usual, we begin by visiting the Spring Initializer page. Give your project a name and add the Spring Web dependency. To illustrate the idea, we'll create a straightforward REST API. Generate the project when ready, unzip it and open it in your IDE. Let's start by creating a REST controller with an endpoint that will simply return the version of the backend server. So create a health controller class. Add the REST controller and the REST mapping annotation and specify the controller path of slash API slash health. Then define the version endpoint which is a GET request. The value we return here will be the server version which is defined in our pom.xml file. We will read that value from an environment variable. So let's define the variable to hold that value. I use the add value annotation and specify the identifier of the variable I want to read, which is com.example.video4.version. Then I return this variable in the version method. This environment variable doesn't exist yet, so let's work on that next. Open the application.properties file and define the com.example.video4.version variable and assign it a value of version which is enclosed in add symbols. The add symbol here is a special syntax used for replacement of values. During build time, the resource files will be processed and any values that use the add symbol will be replaced with actual values for those properties. I also set the active spring profile value as well, which comes from the spring underscore profile property. So when we build the Docker image, we will specify the profiles to be used by the application. For example, the development profile or the production profile. Next, open the pom.xml file. Here you'll notice the version property. So this value will be set for the com.example.video4.version property during build time. To make use of spring profiles and being able to set them, we need to configure Maven to recognize them. So let's define our application profiles, dev for development and prod for production. After the properties tag, add a profiles tag, then a profile tag and set the ID to dev. Then we'll say that this will be the default profile when building if no profile is specified. And then we're going to set a property when this profile is active. So we're going to set the spring underscore profile property to dev, which is then assigned to the spring.profiles.active property. Next we'll define the prod profile and set the spring underscore profile property value to prod. In order for the resource files to be processed, we need to configure the Spring Boot Maven plugin to do so. Over in the plugin section, we have the Spring Boot Maven plugin defined at the Maven resources plugin. And what we do is we configure the filtering of resource files in our source main resources directory. This means that if any files use the add syntax to reference the property or environment variable, it will get replaced with the actual value at build time. With that in place, we can now start our app. And I'll use curl to execute a request to the version endpoint. And we get back the version that is defined in the pom.xml file. And if you look at the server startup logs, we can see the default dev profile is active. Next, I'll show you how to leverage profiles to configure your application to behave differently based on the activated profile. Spring loads the application.properties file by default, then loads any profile specific properties file. So we create a file for the dev profile and give it a name of application-dev.properties and create another for the prod profile called application-prod.properties. So what I'm going to do is alter the version of the app depending on the profile that is active. This is just to demonstrate the concept of having multiple profiles. So for the dev profile, I'll open the application-dev.properties file and I will overwrite the version environment variable and append dev to the version string. And similarly for the prod profile, open the application-prod.properties file and I'll append prod to the version string. Now I'll use Maven to start up the server.
and we get an error because the port is in use since our server is already running, so I need to stop the instance started by IntelliJ. Execute the Spring Boot run task again and we can confirm the dev profile is active. And now in the terminal execute the version request and we get back our altered version for the dev profile. Now let's check our other profile. So stop the server, tick the prod profile and untick the dev profile and execute Spring Boot run again. We can confirm the prod profile is active and executing our version endpoint again, we get the version altered for the prod profile. So that is how you can provide different values for the same environment variable using multiple Spring profiles. Now onto building the Docker image. In our pom.xml file in the plugin section, define a new plugin for the Spring Boot Maven plugin. You may notice this plugin is already defined, but I had completely missed that. So you can update the existing definition instead of creating a new one, or you can do exactly as I do, since this is not an actual problem, but just FYI. So here we configure the image build process. I hard code the profile into the Docker image. Then I add placeholders for the Docker image name and additional tags. I also specify the builder that we'll use, and that is the full builder from Paqueta build packs. The reason to use the full builder is that the base Docker image has additional tools such as curl, which can be used for health checks in Docker stack for Docker Swarm or other container platforms. Next, let's define the image name property. Inside the properties tag, define a new property named docker.image.name no tags, and we'll use some variables here. Then define another property to represent the image name with the version tag. Back in our plugin section, fill in the name of the image. So this will be the image name together with the version tag. And in the tags element, specify the image name without the version and add the latest tag. So when we build the image, it will have two tags, a version tag and the latest tag. If you try to build the image now by running an MVN install, the build process will run, but the image will not be built. We need to tell the plugin to actually build the image. To fix that, add the build image goal in the execution tags. Now if you run MVN install, you'll see it actually builds an image. And once it's finished, you'll see the two tags that are created for the image. Next, I'll show you how to leverage runtime environment variables. For that, we'll create another endpoint to return the value. In the health controller, add a new endpoint for the test var1 path. Then duplicate the injection of the environment variable. We'll be changing it shortly. Open the application.properties file and define a new variable called com.example.video4.testfar1 and the value assigned to it will come from the testfar1 environment variable. Next, come back to the health controller and update the reference to the property name and the variable name and then return this variable in the new endpoint. Okay, if you try to build your image, now you'll get an error because the generated tests don't run due to a missing environment variable. To work around that, you'll have to pass the environment variable for testfar1 when running the mvn install command. But for now, we're just going to delete the test file. Now build the docker image again using mvn install. To test our docker image, we're going to use docker. Create a docker compose file in the root folder. In the docker file, we're just going to create a simple service called backend, specified to use our built image and the latest tag. Expose the 8080 port, and lastly we'll specify an environment variable to be passed to our application. And the value here comes from the environment variable called testvar1. You'll see how exactly to pass in these values. Now open up the terminal. We're going to run the docker compose command, but to pass in environment variables, you define them first before the command. So define the test var1 variable and assign it a value, then type docker compose up dash d. Wait a little for the docker container to start. Now we'll check the logs of our application to ensure it started correctly. So execute docker container ls to list the containers. Copy the container ID of our container, then execute docker logs container ID. Alright, so we see our log output and the app has started ok. Now let's query the REST API. 
I'll use curl to query the version endpoint. And we get back our app version, which is altered for the prod profile. And then let's query the test var endpoint. And we get back hello, which we specified when running the Docker command. So this test var one environment variable is an example of how you'd pass in sensitive information to your application without hard coding it or committing secrets in source control. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.